full of lead bigger battles. We're doing another British army investigating strange doings. This time it's Commander Tesco. Remember last time the uh, British did not do so well against the mindless hordes of death cultists invading their land. I won't make a joke about the current state of London. Anyway, Commander Tesco, let's take a look at these forces. I guess we could take a look at the terrain since we're already all the way back here. Down here in the corner, you know, we got a road, we got a river, there's a ford and, you know, a swamp and, you know, dead trees and something weird about this bridge. Let's look at the uh, British forces and their abilities first, shall we? Commander Tesco is encouraging, which means if he gives up his entire turn, he can remove all shock from any unit within six inches. He is mounted, he's solid, he's got a pistol and a sword, that's about it. Um, but uh, he's solid as a rock. He will only fall back if he's forced to regroup. In other words, he has more shock than wounds. From left to right, we've got a unit of light infantry with rifled muskets. There's 10 of these blokes. They uh, can shoot 6 inches short, 12 inches long. They are rangers, which means they ignore terrain. And they are skirmishers. They can fire and move without penalty. We've got a light cannon up here. They roll 3 dice to shoot. They have a pretty good range. It's... Um, they have a pretty good range. It's uh, 9 inches short, 18 inches long. I'm playing half scale because these are 15 millimeter figures. And then we've got light cavalry. They are agile. When they're shot at, they can take a free move to cover. They're slippery. If anyone charges them on a 5-up task, they can make a move. They can fire at half strength and then make one move away from the target. And here's our line infantry. They are ranged fighters. They roll D12s to shoot. And they only roll D8s in melee combat. I've already deployed them where they're going to start the battle. The opponent, opposing force does not start the battle until after these guys... Well, actually, I take it back. So these guys deployed, and I'm going to... I put these guys here just for the sake of... Um, they just came on the board. I put them here just for the sake of illustration. So there's our commander. And um, we're going to put the commander on the hill as well. Um... The cannon is still limbered. It takes a full turn to unlimber, and they have just come on the board. So I think we're about ready to deal out some cards. And what I'm going to do is deal out one card to determine when the opposing force reveals itself. I've taken the liberty of shuffling the cards, dealing them out, showing you who's going to go when. As you can see, our opposition force is going to appear on the bridge, on the Five of Club. That gives our British boys time to move. Now, everybody here is a regular, which means they can move two and a half inches for regular foot, four inches for cavalry. As we can see, the cannon is going to get to move first. They are going to go ahead at, well, our commander has kind of in the way. So we'll set our, our cannon up here, and then on the next turn, they'll have to actually unlimber before they can fire. I guess one thing we can do is turn it around this way just to show that it's not quite set up yet. Then our cavalry will move. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and move everybody but Commander Tesco, and then we'll take a look at what happens here. Away off there in the distance, you can see that the skirmishers have entered the rough ground here. It does not block line of sight, but it does provide cover. The cannon is still set up where we showed. The light infantry, the light cavalry, I should say, have moved to within six inches of the bridge, and then way up there on the hill... The line infantry have moved directly to their right. They've clambered up the hill. It took both moves to do that. There is broken ground in front of the hill. They're moving to secure a ford that they've noticed off to the right of the screen. In fact, if I pan over, we may be able to show you. There's a ford right there. Uh, meanwhile, we are now on the five of clubs, and that means it's time for the dramatic appearance of these fellas. Yeah, it's the Troll Brothers. These are taken directly from the rule book. They are armored, meaning they get an 8-up save. There's three minis. Each of them have four wounds apiece. They are ferocious, meaning they do plus one wound to their opponent. And they are brutes. They have no missile fire, but they do roll d12 in melee. And their defenders have to re-roll wound rolls that they make against these big boys, who are going to start off right up here on the bridge. And they say, uh, you, get, you boys come to pay the toll? And of course, the British are servants of the king, and this is the king's bridge, so they ain't paying no toll. Our commander is going to go ahead and come on down over to here, and that's going to be the end of the turn. Then we have to shuffle, and unfortunately for the British, what they don't realize is the Troll Brothers are not alone. 
As you can see, I've zoomed out. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the Trolls reinforcements. They have two units of troops that will appear on the second turn. That means right now I'll deal out a card for them. And on the third turn, they have another one coming on. There's a special unit that will come on when the Joker appears. And that unit, I don't know where it's coming from. Uh, we're going to roll a D6 and give each of these road entries one. So basically our trolls are going to call out Bree Yark. And old Yark himself is going to make an appearance. And gamers everywhere around the world know that Yark means bad news. So for now, I'm going to deal a card for these guys and a card over here that will tell us at what activation their first reinforcements show up. The forces of chaos are not wasting any time here, are they? They dealt a joker for the reinforcements. So that is going to be considered an ace. We also need to deal out a card for the special reinforcement who will appear on a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And on a 6, that extra reinforcement comes on early in the process. So let me show you, and then just to show you that I'm not cheating, this joker becomes an ace. And we've got reinforcements appearing right here. The frogs on turn two. So let's take a look at those forces before we play out our turn, shall we? On the right, appearing in the pond, we have the frogmen. The frogmen are skirmishers. They can move and shoot. They've got thrown spears, which have a range of two and then four inches. They're amphibious, obviously. They can move through any water hazards without penalty. And they are slippery when they are charged. They can take a shot at half strength and then make a full move. All of these guys are irregular, so they're getting the little extra movement bump. And then coming in on the road to the British rear is this big boy. Now, I know that the frogmen are from Splintered Light Miniatures. I don't know where the big Cyclops comes from. I think he might be Raul Partha. Obviously, he is a 25mm figure who is just an absolute monster. We're treating him as a giant today, which means he's ferocious. And he is large, so he has a total of plus two on wound rolls to opponents. He has 12 wounds, which means he rolls 12 attacks. Well, and, and as he gets wounded, that'll go down. Uh, and then, he, in addition to that, foes who re -roll, who roll a six or better on the wound roll have to re-roll that. In other words, you got to hit him twice. And then, But the good news is he is plus one when shot at. He also has flurry of blows if his melee attack causes only shock against his opponent, immediately fight a second round before you figure out who won, and then he is solid as a rock. So just like Commander Tesco, he is only forced back when he needs to regroup, meaning more shock counters on him than wound counters. Let's deploy them out and play our second turn. The Frogmen are going to declare this Joker as a King of Diamonds. Because it's a wild card, they go after the British King of Diamonds goes. And they're doing that because they want these British boys to commit. They want the British boys to use their first action. Of course, the British boys are going to go ahead and move to... He Ooh, what should we do? Let's form them up into close order. That's going to give us a lot more firepower. And because they're on the hill, so we're going to have to give them basically three ranks. They just won't fit. And the good news is, because they're on the hill, um, I, I would say, you know, firing down into the rocks might be an issue. But they have a nice, fat, 9-inch range. So anybody that approaches to within 45 degrees. So they've secured the basically everything from the Ford over to about here is within their line of sight. Now, they're not going to be able to fire this turn, which allows the frogs an opportunity to scramble up and... Um, reposition themselves and they're going to move over this way remember so i should have pointed out the stream is uncrossable to everybody that's not amphibious the humans can only cross at the stream in the ford which is going to give them uh give the forces of a cast a lot more flexibility next up will be mr giant who activates on the king of clubs and he's going to move now he's got a choice does he go after the cannon first or does he go after the commander and i think in this case you really want to decapitate your arm your enemy so we move him up, he can move three inches, he's got the movement, and he is going to take a big honking stab at Commander Tesco. Now he is rolling D12s on his, this is not going to go well for the Commander. He is going to take 12 hits as an irregular, 
this old boy charged. He's hitting on everything that's a five. Now, I've only got eight dice here. That gives us one, two, three, four, five hits on the first roll. And then we'll roll these three. And we get uh, one more hit, and then he's got one more attack. So a total of nine hit, seven hits on our commander, who does, at this juncture, get to re-roll three as well. But let's go ahead and roll. Remember, this is going to be a plus two on the wound check. If we get a total of, that's one, two, three, four, that just completely obliterates him. But at least he gets to go down swinging, right? That ain't nothing. So he gets to take three shots back, and he is also going to be hitting on fives. He gets a pair of sixes, so we'll give him that. And then on the wound check, he gets a five and an eight. But because the big boy is so big, so he does deliver one shock. Because the big boy is so big, he is going to um, re-roll this eight. And it turns into a ten, which means he now takes two wounds. I'm going to give old Yark a wound counter since he's got 12. I'm going to give him, he's taken two wounds so far. Oh, and he also received a shot, didn't he? So we'll drop that down as well. Um, the good news is, it's the skirmisher's turn to fire. And they're going to go ahead and withdraw into the woods completely. So they will be in light cover. I'm not sure what that does in melee. But they've got two, four, six, eight, ten shots on the big boy. They're going to go ahead and blast away. Because they're firing with their muskets at close range, they're definitely within six inches, they are going to be hitting on fives. Ten dice hitting on fives because they moved. And we'll pull out the misses. Two, four. Why did I roll a d12? I owe them one more d20. We'll use the big one. Pulling out the misses. Uh, that is a hit. And I'll put the hit back in there. Any other misses? Nope. So that's it. So nice shooting for these guys. Two, four, six, seven hits all together. We will roll seven wounds. Oh, I know why. Because that wasn't a d12. That was a, it was a wound check. Okay. So on our wound check, we are going to get a total of four shock and three wounds. Again, because he's the giant, just make sure I'm doing this right. He is going to be at foes must reroll any six or better when wounding him. So four shock. And then we get a 6, 9, and a 2. So it turns into 5 shock and 3 wounds. So he is now up to 5 wounds altogether. And he's got a total of 2 shock. Where are my shock markers? Here we go. 5 wounds, 2 shock. He does not have more wounds than shock, but he's getting into the realm of, of danger because he's only going to be rolling 7 dice on the attack. And the good news is, and he's very vulnerable to these guys, the good news is the Troll Brothers can go, and the Troll Brothers can move on the six. They can move a total of six inches, which unfortunately for them... Oh, and these guys can't cross the stream either. All they're going to be able to do is rush up to here to kind of protect their boss man, and they're going to go ahead and do the double move because it forces... On the Two of Hearts, I think Two of Hearts is next. It forces these guys, unless they pass a task roll, uh, unless the Light Cavalry passes an 8-up task roll, they have to charge the nearest foes. It would be nice to put these guys out of action and oh, also clear the path so we can get a shot off at the trolls. But, again, they're going to have to pass that 8-up task roll. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. Looking for an 8-up. 11, they get it. They are going to be able to charge into melee with a very shocked giant. The Light Cavalry is going to be hitting on fives. We'll try to roll nothing but d12s this time. And they're going to get a total of uh, one hit altogether, two hits altogether. Nice fight in there, guys. 
All right, so two hits, checking for wounds. They're going to get a 6 and a 10, but they got to re-roll both of those. They're going to wind up with a 5 and a 2. They will deliver two more shock. And now our big boy gets to counterattack. He is hitting on 6s because he's irregular, meaning he's only going to get one hit. We'll roll to see what the effect is, and it is one wound, which may be better for these guys. You know, on second thought, it might have been smarter to just hold back and shoot at him, because then you wouldn't have taken any casualties. Come on, guys. You've got carbines. What are you doing? The last thing we're going to do is flip our cannon around and get ready. He's got a 90-degree fire arc, and that's the end of the turn. I forgot the Lake Cavalry lost that fight. No wounds to one, so they had to fall back one move. Our final unit takes the board on the Four of Diamonds. They're going to be appearing at the Ford. And the cards have come up, come up nice for the British. They are going to hold tight. They want to see who's appearing over there. They were thinking about firing at these guys. Well, I don't know. Do we want to go ahead and take the shot at these guys while we got it? We could do that with a Jax. Are they even within range? Uh, nine inches. These guys are at ten inches away, so they're not even within range. The British muskets only have a range of nine inches. We could always hold them, uh, but then they'd be shooting at a minus one, but they are shooting on the D12s. Let's do that. Let's use these guys as a hold action, because that way they can do a little interrupt, and when these trolls move up to here, they can take a shot. Although... Come to think of it, yeah, because these guys, this time they are smart enough. They're going to use their carbines. They're going to take the shots. There are only seven of them this time. But shooting at a distance, so much nicer. Regulars hitting on fives. They did not move, so it should be just hitting on fives. And they're going to do, that's a D12. They're going to hit on one, two, three, four, four of their shots. And those four shots are going to do a grand total of... You know, come to think of it, I don't think I added the plus two to the wounds for this guy, did I? Mm, and not only that, but I rolled, but it evens out, because he should have rolled two fewer dice. He should only have been attacking with five. He's got seven wounds left, so that's seven, minus two for the shock that he had. So we're going to call it even, okay? I messed up two rules, but they kind of balance each other out. On this shooting attack, our boys are going to get a grand total of two Oh wow, that's great. You're gonna get you're gonna get three shock, and then we get one more roll. It's gonna do one more wound. So that's six wounds and six shock all together for the big boy. No, seven shock, which is great because it forces him to regroup. These guys have taken a total of eight wounds. That means they roll four dice in melee, but also they have a shock. They're only gonna be rolling three dice in melee on this turn. The next card to activate will be this one. And again, just to show you that I'm keeping everything above the board, on turn number three, we've got lizards appearing at the Ford. And now those British look pretty darn clever for holding their fire as long as they did. Because when these lizard men come on, and I can bring them to the camera this time, these bright, colorful chaps. Those are our little lizard men. Let's talk about, they're going to appear right on the Ford. And let's talk about what their abilities are. The lizard men, of course, they are amphibious. They are slippery. When they are charged, with a five up, they can shoot and at half strength and then move. But they are poor shots and small. They're minus one to be shot at. And when they hurl their spears, which only have a range of two inches short, four inches long... Um, they're going to be a minus one on top of any other penalties they have. So not a particularly powerful unit, the, the last to show up. But that's just because the, the Joker actually came out this time. Remember, last time it didn't. And they're activating on the four. And they might as well go ahead and... There's a total of 12 of them. They can move straight across here. to reinforce that area, or I think what we need to do, we're just going to go ahead and bring them up to here. They're probably going to get shot through ribbons, but this line infantry is pretty... Actually, you know what we could do? We could bring them straight up this way. B2. 
because that way they're out of the front arc of fire of this unit. And they're going to have to go, and this is exactly what they're going to do. Uh, they're going to go right now. They're going to use their interrupt, and they're going to have to pivot. They're going to have to break their open order, which effectively amounts to a move to take the shot at those guys. So the Lizardmen are going to eat a total of 12 shots. I've got eight dice here right now. Those 12 shots are going to be at, if they're four and a half inches, that's four and a half. They are at long range at least. All right, let's slow down. These guys have moved. They are shooting at minus one. These guys are small. That's an additional minus one. Normally they'd hit on fives, but because of those two factors, they're only going to be hitting on sevens now. So I've got a total of, I'm going to roll six dice two times, counting the sevens. We get one, two, three, four, five, six. Whew. We'll re-roll that one. Seven, eight, nine hits all together. So I'm going to have to roll eight wound checks. Again with the D12s. He's a little cocked. We'll re-roll. So we do two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven hits all together. And then they get one shock. So this one guy. So that is the power of British musketry right there, baby. That was devastating. Although they are now out of ammo. And this poor little guy over here does have his one little shock. Then it's going to be the three of spades. Our frogmen are racing over here trying to get to the guys in the woods. And they are only going to be able to move six inches. They may have a little something to say about this. Might have gone better if these guys with the spears had attacked the light cavalry. Guys with spears force light cavalry to fight at a minus one. But that was an easy one. And then we have to decide what to do with these guys. And I think the only thing for it is to go ahead and charge. Now, they are within charge distance. But these guys do have the option of trying to evade on a 5+, plus, which they do not. So we will fight a battle in which the Brutes are going to be rolling three dice to hit. And they are attacking on D12s. The Brutes hit on a six, but they charge, so it's a seven. So they are going to be hitting two times. We will roll for wounds, and they are going to get an eight and a 12. But because they are ferocious, the eight and the 12 turn to a nine and a 13. And that means they're going to do three wounds. One, two, and three. On the counterattack, our light cavalry is going to get to roll seven attacks. So even at three attacks, these guys are still pretty impressive. Seven attacks on the trolls. Hitting on fives, because they're regulars. And they're going to get one, two, three, four hits all together. We'll take these out of here. And the four hits are going to do a total of one, one, not nine, and seven. So we'll roll for the shock markers first. And eight and a ten means no shock. The seven becomes one wound. And the two wounds becomes on a three, three wounds. And that will do it for these guys. They were sitting on, well, will it? They were sitting on two, four, six, eight. It won't. It's going to do it for these guys. And then this last one is going to be stuck. Now, he had four wounds. He is still stuck with three wounds. But he's still in the fight. And not only that, but he did more wounds, didn't he? So our light cavalry are once again going to have to pull back four inches to about here. I think that's pretty good. And that will be the end of the turn. King of Diamonds means a reload for those boys. The Jack of Diamonds plus one to close combat means our big boy will charge these guys. Now, they don't have anywhere to withdraw to. Can they still evade? On a seven, they can. Um, how far away are they? So he's going to be able to move six inches to catch them and anywhere they go he's still going to be able to catch them 
And not only that, but they haven't reloaded their carbines yet. So we're just going to do a melee. And the big boy gets a plus one in combat. He's only going to get to roll the one charge, but he is ferocious and he is a brute, so maybe he can do a couple more. On the 11, he's going to hit. He's going to be at plus one on the wound. That's going to wound two of these guys and knock two of them out. And they don't get a save, but they do get four counterattacks, which will hit on the fives. So they get a total of one, two hits all together. And those two hits are going to deliver uh, a shock and a wound, and that's going to be it for him. But they are reduced to just two of their original number. Next up will be the Nine of Spades. Cannon reloads. Nine of Clubs, they're going to go ahead and reload because they see what's coming. These guys are going to be able to move a total of six inches, and we're going to keep them... Through the woods. Remember, the woods block line of fire for one inch. So being able to slide along here might give them the opportunity to put some more hurt on the British skirmishers over there. Then the cannon... Oh, I already did the cannon reload. Then our plucky little guy is going to... He, I don't even think he has the movement to get up there because it's going to cost him... It's two inches to climb the hill. He's not within four inches. So I he's done, man. He's done. Well, I get... All right. The thing is, having him in the game, we're going to bring him six inches to here. Because at least now he's in cover. So as whatever happens the next turn, he is tying down this unit of British infantry. And then these guys are going to reload as well. And that's going to be the end of the turn. Once again, the cards come up for the British. We've got the King of Hearts are going to go first. They don't have a shot. They're just going to hang out. Might as well. Nothing else to do. Our Light Cavalry will move the full 8 inches up to here. Trying to put pressure on these guys. And then we'll have the... Um, the Line Infantry... What do we do? Do we have him shoot at this? Yeah, let's just have him shoot at that guy. I, I, I think this scenario is over. We're, we're just... The, the forces of chaos are hoping for a miracle at this point. But miracles are the purview of the good guys. So rolling for... Um, it's going to be at... They're, they're not in concentrated fire anymore. So they're going to be hitting on fives. They're at close range, so they're hitting on fours. But he is small and in cover. And we'll even call it hard cover. So we'll bump that up by two. So they go from five to seven to eight. And then, oh, we should roll the right kind of dice as well. And now I need to start all over. But hey, it's better off, you're better off starting over and getting it right the first time, aren't you? Two, four, six, eight dice. All right, so hitting on fives, six, seven for the cover, eight because he's small. And then it's going to be seven because he's at short range and we're rolling d12s so they're going to get a total of and i'll pull out the misses one two three four looking for sevens here's the other four shots so they get one two three four five hits all together pull those out and those five hits if they get a single number above six that's going to put an end to the lizard man's hopes and lizard man dreams that gets rid of his card as well. Then we come over here to where the skirmishers have an option to move their two and a half inches, and they're going to get the first shot at these lizard men or at these frog guys, and that's going to be a real problem for them, I think. Remember that the skirmishers suffer no penalty for moving and no movement penalty for moving through the woods. The only thing the frogmen have going for them is the skirmishers. There's 10 of them, 6, 8, 9, and I don't know where my number 10 is. I'm going to have to re-roll one of these misses as the 10th. So at very close range, they are going to be hitting on 4s. No, 5s, excuse me, because it's short range. So this is our extra shot. They get 1, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 hits all together. Six hits. 
Rolling to see what happens. We get two, four, five, six, seven, eight deaths altogether, leaving just four of these guys left to counterattack. So we'll pick out all but four of them. One, two, three, four, and we'll make it a nice mix. And the British are doing way better. Much more balanced in counter, I think. I think that having every all the British on at once really paid off. Uh, the last thing we have to do now is... Oh, I think these guys have one shock as well, thanks to that shooting. So they're going to charge in, and they're only going to get to dice three times. So three times for the frogmen, and they're going to get three hits all together. And those three hits are going to do three shock, which doesn't mean anything on the counterattack, which we'll see... Um, we'll roll five dice twice. Uh, the counterattack is going to hit one, two, three, four times for the first half, four times, and then five, six all together. So we roll six wound checks. And the frogmen, um, yeah, they're not really built for this. They, they might have been better off just standing here and shooting and hoping to get charged. They're going to take another two, three, and that's there's only going to be one guy left, and he's going to have all the shock and be forced to regroup, which means route off the board. So, uh, at the expense of their leader and a whole lot of light cavalry... Now, one of the other things that I noticed as I was playing through this, the British did not receive very many shock results. So the early loss of their leader didn't hurt them so bad. In the last battle, they were it was pouring shock counters. They were just raining down on the British like rain on Britain. Just all over the place, so it really limited what the British could do. This time, because they were just taking casualties and not a whole lot of shocks, that meant that the guys that were still on the table could move and they had a lot more options. That made the difference. So, interesting battle here. Again, we're doing that whole fantasy Napoleonics thing that everybody seems to be into right now. But unlike most people, we're not just smearing dirt on it. We're doing some bright... Look how colorful this guy is, man. He's even got the striped pants. Ain't he great? Right, we like to keep it bright and cheerful around here as we are slaughtering the forces of chaos. Speaking of slaughtering the forces of chaos, I'm praying for you.